Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video, we're going to be looking at menus in Swift UI. Menus are basically replacing action sheets, and we're going to be looking at a couple of options. We'll be using them to provide a selection of options instead of using a segmented picker control, and we'll also be looking at adding a menu to a toolbar item that has multiple levels. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. The biggest problem I had with action sheets was that you often lost the context for the action performed. The sheet on an iPhone popped up from the bottom of the screen, away from where you tapped. Menus give us a number of options and configurations. I'm going to be using this starter project, and it's available from the link in the notes below. In the content view, we have a bunch of food items that are presented in a list, each with information about the food group, calories per unit, and the quantity selected along with the total calories for that item. At the top of the screen, the total calorie count is displayed. Below that is a segment control that allows me to change the sort order. We're going to be replacing this with a menu. If I tap on any row, I get to see some detail and I'm able to change the number of units and update it or delete it entirely from the list. I want to replace these buttons here with a toolbar item that is a menu of choices. There's no persistence here, so each time you run the app, the same data will appear. My model is a food item with these properties, and to keep my code concise, I have a number of computed variables to display my content better. Notice as well that each food item has a property called food group that is a string enum, and it has a computed property called string value that capitalizes the raw value of the case. There's also a static variable called sample data that is the mock data that is used for the application. This gets loaded in our view model and is presented in the list. The food items model is initialized in our content view as an observable object, and it contains a published array of food items initialized, as I said, with our mock data. There's also a sort order property that is of type sort order, another enum. When I change the sort order, it changes this value, and we can use this computed property that is also an array of food item sorted based on the enum selected. There are a couple of other computed properties for display purposes, and two functions that are used by our item detail view to either update the quantity or delete the item altogether. Let's get started then. In content view, this segmented picker control is this entire vStack. So instead of this, I want to present a menu of options. I'm not going to be touching the rest of the code in this view. But before I cut it out or comment it out, I'm going to leave it here for reference. And I'll start a menu right here before the list. As with buttons, menus have two different ways to initialize them. If all you want to do is create a menu tile using the localized string key, create the string as the menu argument like this, and include your content in the closure. Now typically the menu items are buttons with a title and action, like this where I can create a button with a title, and for the action, set the food items vm dot sort order to the corresponding enum value. And I can do that for all three options. In the preview, we can see that this is working. I have a menu. Now, if I want my title to be something more descriptive, I could use the alternate form that uses the label argument. Now the closure will be the same, but the label we can do what we want. And I'm going to use a label which is a Swift UI view. And I have a number of options for label. And I'll soon be creating a video just on labels, so watch for that. In my case, I want to choose the one that uses the string and system image. For the string, I'll start with sort, and for the image, I'll use arrow.up.arrow.up.sort. 
dot down dot circle dot fill. I'll even apply a font modifier to this. There's no indication right now what that sort order is though. So let's make one more modification and use string interpolation on the fooditemsvm.sortorder.raw value and say sorted by and use the fooditemsvm.sortorder enums raw value. Now this is looking pretty good, but when I pick my selection, there is no indication as to what the current value is. Well, it turns out that the menu doesn't have to be a group of buttons. It can also be a picker. So let's just cut that out of here without taking the picker style, and we'll no longer need this entire segmented control V stack. So let's just remove it. Now we can replace this code for our buttons with our picker code. Now when I make my selection, I can see the check mark of the previously selected item. Pretty slick. In content view, when I tap on one of the items in the list, I'm taken to the next view where I can do one of three things. I can update the quantity and this dismisses the view and updates the list and the total. On that screen, I can also delete the item and again it returns and updates our total calories or I can just view and cancel to return. It's these three buttons that I want to turn into a menu and place on our navigation bar, which in iOS 14 is just a toolbar. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best practice with respect to Apple's human interface guidelines. I'm just going to do that as it gives me an opportunity to show you some more features of menus. Switching now to item detail, I am seeing that the preview is not working properly. I've discovered that it's the on appear code that's causing the issue, so we can temporarily comment it out while we're building our menu. Let's start by adding a toolbar. And if you're unsure of the toolbar API, make sure you watch my video on that topic. I'll leave a link in the description below. Right after the navigation bar title, let's add our toolbar and inside that toolbar, a toolbar item with a placement of automatic. It's inside here that we can create a menu, and I'm just going to use the short form for the label and call it action. This time it's not going to be a pick of view. We actually will have buttons. So let's just use the buttons that we already have. So I'll copy and use them. If I enter preview mode and tap on the action button, my menu is presented. That's pretty cool. And if we are going to run this app in the simulator and uncomment that on a pure code, it would work because all we have done is move the buttons from the H stack to the menu. However, here tapping on any but the cancel buttons will actually crash the preview. Anyway, we can do a little bit better than this. First, Let's separate the Cancel button away from the two actions. And we do this by creating sections. All we have to do is embed the first two buttons in a section block, and then the Cancel button in one of its own. Tapping the Action button clearly shows the separation now. But let's fix up the UI even more by changing the button text to labels that will use some system images. For the first one, we can change text to label and add a comma followed by the system image of pencil. We'll do the same for the delete button. And this time we'll use a system image trash. This is looking pretty good so far. Now our cancel button actually dismisses the entire view and returns to the list. What if we wanted a choice to return to the item detail or return to the list view? This is still basically a cancel action, but with two choices. 
one that will dismiss the view by calling the dismiss function on the presentation mode, and the other will do nothing. So instead of having a single button, let's embed this in a menu that we'll call cancel. We'll just duplicate this to create a second button. For the first button, we'll change this to a label, and we'll change the text to return, and have a system image of return. Now we don't need any action here, because selecting the item with no action will just dismiss the menu. For the second, I'll change the text again to a label, and I'll change it to dismiss, with a system image of arrow shape dot turn dot up dot backward. I can test this in preview, and I see that when I tap the cancel button, there are those two options in a new menu, and they both have these nice labels. Now before I test this in the simulator, let's remove those three buttons, including the H stack and padding. And I'll also uncomment the on appear code so I can run it in the simulator. I told you the preview didn't like this code. Let's test our sort first and sort by calorie count. I'll update from a 6 ounce to a 8 ounce steak. And then I'll tap on our action menu button and select update. The view dismisses and I see that my steak is now a whopping 584 calories. I'd better cut back on peanuts, so I'll tap on it. And then on the detail screen, tap the action button and tap delete. That's better. If we tap on any item and then on the detail screen, the action button, I can tap the cancel option. And if I tap on return, it just takes me back to the detail screen. If I tap on dismiss, it takes me back to the main content view. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is good UI design. In fact, I probably wouldn't configure my menu button for the detail view like that. However, we did learn something about configuring menu buttons in the process. If you found it useful, I'd love to hear your comments. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store, and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.